Last time, we took the first steps towards proving that e to the pi i is equal to negative 1. Our first step was to prove that e to the x is equal to the power series 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 factorial plus x to the third over 3 factorial plus into infinity. Today, we'll prove similar power series for two of the most important equations in mathematics, the sine and cosine, which, when combined together, will give us e to the x. And from there, to a short step, through the unit circle, we'll show that e to the pi i is equal to negative 1. Let's get started. I'd like to find the power series for the cosine of x. In order to find this power series, I'm going to use something called Taylor polynomials. So we'll let f of x be equal to the cosine of x. Just for starters, to get the idea behind Taylor polynomials, let's find the second degree Taylor polynomial for cosine of x. So we want a polynomial called, we'll call it p of x, that's equal to ax squared plus bx plus c. So we want p of x to be equal to this expression, and we want f of 0, or the cosine of 0, to be equal to p at 0. We want the derivative f prime at 0, or the derivative of the cosine, to be equal to p prime at 0, or the derivative of p. And we want f double prime at 0 to be equal to p double prime at 0. So p of 0 is just going to be equal to c, if we plug c into this expression. p prime at 0, we need to take the derivative of this first. So let me just draw a line here. p prime of x is equal to 2ax plus b. Just treating a, b, and c as constants and taking the derivative. And p double prime at x is going to be equal to 2a. So then p prime of 0 is equal to b, because that 2a will vanish. And p double prime of 0 is going to be equal to 2a, because p double prime is just a constant function of 2a. Through the magic of video editing, I just rearranged this so that it's a little bit neater and easier to follow. So we have p of x, its derivative and its second derivative over here. Then we have the equality that we want to set up, that our function f of x at 0 is going to be the same as p of x, and its derivative is going to be the same at 0, and their second derivatives are going to be the same at 0. So now we need to write what f of 0, f prime of 0, and f double prime of 0 are. So for starters, f of 0 is going to be equal to the cosine of 0. And the cosine of 0 is equal to 1. And then the second derivative, or I'm sorry, the first derivative of cosine is going to be the negative sine of 0, which is going to be equal to 0. And the second derivative is just going to be um, the negative cosine of 0, which will be equal to negative 1. So from this, we see that 1 is equal to c, 0 is equal to b, and 1 is equal to 2a. Hence, our polynomial, p of x, is going to be equal to p of x is a is, well, 2a is equal to negative 1 means that a is equal to negative 1 half. 
So it's negative one half a. B is equal to zero, so plus zero, plus c, which is one. I'm oh, sorry, one half x squared plus one. So our polynomial p of x is negative one half squared plus one. It goes like this. And it does the same thing in the other direction. Look like this. As you can see, the second degree Taylor polynomial is similar to cosine x near zero. So let's take a look at what happens to the Taylor polynomial as we extend it to higher degree.